last but one uh, panelist, uh, Mara Hunter. Um, now, as you know, the Right to Know campaign had a massive march yesterday outside Parliament. So there's still a bit of fire inside of me, and I want to say I'm on the but good morning instead. Uh, just briefly, for, for, for those coming from abroad, obviously the Right to Know campaign was launched as a civil society initiative against the protection of state information bill last year, uh, or to call it by its real name, or its proper name, the secrecy bill. Uh, and I think the first thing that I need to acknowledge here, and I'm not sure if this point has been made, yet, as the bill itself goes before our Parliament and National Assembly on Tuesday, we have to recognize that while this is an enormous threat to people's right to access information, uh, in fact the secrecy bill has been an enormous opportunity for civil society at the same time. Uh, in a way it's galvanized us, it's given us uh, a whole new appetite and a popular appetite, importantly, to access information and to fight for uh, uh, the rights of whistleblowers, the right for our rights to, to access information and, 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 and it's given us, I guess, fire to fight for those rights, uh, and new fire. I mean, obviously there have been many civil society organizations that have been working on this, but it, I think it's been given a whole new popular element. And so I, I'm on record here, uh, let me just pay tribute to the Ministry of State Security for giving us that opportunity, and thank you. No. Uh, obviously, because we've been given that momentum, uh, I think earlier this year, within six months of the campaign launching, our constituent organizations took the decision that while we have some momentum to fight the secrecy bill in Parliament, it gives us new opportunities to fight uh, for broader access to information rights and to fight uh, more broadly for, uh, to protect the rights of whistleblowers as well. And obviously, uh, uh, for media freedom at the same time. Uh, and of course, also to root the right to access information in community struggles, to make that, I mean, this is a popular campaign, some have said too popular, too populist, maybe, uh, but, but we need to root that, uh, that struggle in, in existing uh, community struggles, particularly the struggles of the poor, to, to, you know, for, 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 for basic services. Uh, and I guess in South Africa, if we look at the existing uh, access to information landscape, we know we have higher and we've had it for 10 years and, and its implementation has not been satisfactory at all. Uh, research that may or may not be presented within the last few days and which you're probably aware of say that somewhere between 65 and 75 percent of uh, requests to access government information in terms of this act uh, receive no response whatsoever. Now, the, the, many say that this is partly a product uh, of, of the law's design. But, but more than anything, my sense is that it's a product of, of uh, the, the lack of political will in government to make information available. And Empire, in fact, ironically, 10 years on, has become uh, more, more than anything a, an opportunity for officials to at least ignore the ignore requests for, for, the, for the maximum period of 30 days, sometimes 60 days, uh, in fact, sometimes uh, forever and ever. <laughs> Uh, and, and the question that we asked ourselves was how to make this information, how to create the environment uh, where information is, where it's impossible for officials to ignore these prior requests. How to, how to use our traditional advocacy techniques to, to, to make uh, it, it just too damn embarrassing to ignore these requests. I think we looked at the capacity of Right to Know, which is essentially a coalition of, of firstly lawyers and policy analysts, uh, media campaigners, and, and, and most importantly of all, boots on the ground activists. And we, we, we came up with a, with a kind of carrot and stick, uh, 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 pretty traditional advocacy strategy, whereby communities who are, who, who, whose primary concern is service delivery, access to basic housing, access to water, access to basic education as well. Uh, essentially, the, these are constituents in the Right to Know campaign. We workshopped uh, a, a number of workshops uh, in each community saying, well, what are your demands, what is the information that you're trying to get access to? And over the course of, of some weeks and months, we eventually arrived at key questions that everyone had. That, that had, 
I mean, very basic questions. What is your plan to roll out housing in our community? What is your, who, who owns the land that our houses are built on? And we turn these into prior requests using uh, lawyers within the campaign from the Open Democracy Advice Center. And importantly, we, because we said this was not a lawyer-led campaign, uh, it was these communities that, that drafted these PI applications. And every time we go to submit a PI application to a representative government, we come in, a, 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 in somewhere between 30 and 60 people. Uh, we alert the media, the media get their pictures of angry people standing outside government buildings. Uh, we say within 30 days when, when the time limit uh, for, for your response is up, we'll be here again in, in numbers of 30 to 60, and the media will be here again. And it was our uh, attempt to make it sort of a matter of local and national scandal that information is not being made available on these basic issues. So, where did we end up with that? We, we've only done this with four different communities, uh, and at least in the West of Cape, where I've been involved in this. And the, the, we learned a number of lessons. The first is that three of the four responses, the three of the four applications actually did receive responses. And a lot of that had to do with, I mean, you know, the Western Cape government and the Cape Town government is undertaking a number of initiatives to make sure, to, to, to speed up its, higher, its compliance with the Freedom of Information Law. But more than anything, it was local media reports that seemed to create a great deal of embarrassment that led to a fair bit of movement in the administration to make sure that information was made available. Now what happened is, in fact, these communities, eventually when this information was made available, it was in a stack of documents like this that none of us could understand. And I think our first lesson there is that, that, that information is not the end point, which is where we, I mean, we are not people, you know, most of the activists that write in this campaign have never been uh, access to information experts. We're drawing on the expertise of, of, of um, the freedom of expression networks uh, in, in South Africa, but the truth is that none of us who were driving this campaign had ever really had to, you know, undertake this before. And when we got this stack of documents, we realized that we have a huge flipping problem, which is once you have the information, what do you do with it? And particularly when communities are looking at this information for the first time and realizing that government does not speak the language of, of, of the people when it undertakes its planning, you realize that access to the documents themselves is not enough. We should be asking, uh, you know, and, and perhaps our, our, our problem was that we relied too heavily on, on a freedom of informa information law that we recognize is, does have its limitations. So how do we get access to that information? Perhaps we should be demanding the government meets with its constituents uh, to explain this information. Not to give us documents, but to give us an explanation. It's not always the same thing. Uh, I think I would like to draw on Diana's uh, lessons quite, uh, quite strongly, which is obviously that, that this is a long process and a very costly process. Uh, and it's a process that, is, as, as she said, that, that media organizations are often uh, uh, perhaps too keen to, to claim it as, as, as a fight for their own rights. This is not necessarily about media freedom, but about everyone's rights to access information. Uh, and perhaps, as I say, perhaps. Higher was not, higher has its limitations when it comes to fighting for communities' rights to access information. Uh, higher is, always not, is not always useful. We, 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 communities don't always know what report they're looking for. I mean, essentially, they have very basic questions, which is, what is your plan to improve our lives? And these, the, 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 those questions can't always be answered with a document. So, I think that uh, going forward, we we, we've learned a lot from this, and we, we know that, um, you know that, that, that within the next six months we can undertake the same process, having improved it and hopefully putting more pressure on officials uh, to, 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 to respond to this information, like, um, to respond to these requests uh, with meaning, meaningfully, I think not just uh, in terms of, of the letter of the law, but the spirit, which is to provide people with the answers that they seek. Uh, but, but more than anything, I think we, we do need to recognize that there is an opportunity here for South Africans, and not through the Right to Know campaign, we don't own this landscape at all, but through, for all of civil society to use the, mo mo the momentum that has been created uh, by initi unfortunate initiatives like the Protection of State Information Bill, 
While we fight that bill, we can continue to fight for access to information rights more broadly to achieve not just uh, 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 compliance with the letter of Pio, of Pio but the spirit, the, the, the fundamental understanding that when people are given access to information, when these questions are answered, we can all work towards uh, uh, you know, advancing the causes of social justice in South Africa. And I think that's actually all I have to say. I'm, I'm happy to say that I finished with eight minutes uh, and, and two minutes to spare. So thank you very much.